The following program is made possible by generous gifts from partners of Benny Hinn Ministries and viewers like you in this area. Pastor Benny Hinn is urgently preaching the gospel to the lost because the world's only hope is salvation through God's only Son, Jesus Christ. The gift of God is life eternal. This is your day to join Benny Hinn in proclaiming Jesus as Savior and Healer. Today, I want to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with you as my partner. And I pray what I will share will truly lift your faith to the heavens. You know, the Lord has done some amazing things with me. And I want to just talk to you about it because I really believe that your faith is going to come alive and you're going to believe God for miracles you've never believed God for before. You know, if I look at these prayer requests here today, the number one need is finances. Number one that people pray for is pray for my finances. The second need is family. And the third is physical healing. Now, that's the order that we've noticed for 40 years of ministry now almost, that the number one need in people's lives is finances because finances touch 90% of our lives. Now, the Lord has done something amazing for me and Suzanne in the last few months that has just been really supernatural. And I have, I have learned some new keys that I want to share with you because I really believe as my partner and one who has stood with me in ministry, you need to hear this because it's going to encourage you to believe God for yourself because when God begins to do it uh, in someone like myself in my life, I think, you know, it sparks faith in people that hear it. And the Bible says like people, like priests, you know, what God does for the pastor, he'll do for you because that's just the way it works. Now, you all know that uh, Sue and I, my wife Suzanne and I, are happily remarried. We, we were married for 30 years, divorced for three, remarried again now for life. She and I are madly in love. We've never been happier, and we want to thank you, of course, for praying for us. And I'm seeing restoration come now to our family in an amazing way. But during our divorce, I learned a lot. You know, you go to an, to an empty house for three years, it can drive you mad. And you see losses in your life. And we did have losses financially. And we had losses with family and losses with peace of mind and so forth. And a lot of pain and misery that took place. But when you go through the valley, uh, you know, you can help people who are going through it. And I'm amazed right now when we have our crusades. I call people down who have had troubles with their homes. And to my shock, over 30 percent, sometimes close to 50 percent of the crowd comes down that are struggling with their homes, family, marriages. I mean, they start crying. They begin weeping as they come down, uh, as they start walking down. And so God has done a whole lot for us. And my son, you know what? My, my son Joshua came to me in London. He said, hey, daddy, I will preach the gospel. You know what that did to me when my own ch son my child tells me he'll preach the gospel. And then, of course, he said, but I'll do it my own way. I said, honey, you can do it any way you want as long as you preach the gospel. But I saw what God, you know, how God brought him to the, the place he's in now. And he's helping me on the platform. And he's catching with his, with his cousin, my nephew, Willie. And it's wonderful to see those kids receive the anointing. But I remember, I remember the time when Joshua was, was in, in deep trouble. And I remember when my children were, were, were suffering and struggling. And now I see the joy of the Lord back in Jessica and her family and Michael and the children and their children, my grandkids, and my Tasha and Danny and, J and Joshua and Lily. You know, you see the joy because they see mommy and daddy back together. And Sue and I, I mean, before God, God Almighty, God began to restore us 2011. We were married, of course, uh, March of 2013 this year. We have, we've not had one argument since 2011. I mean, can you believe it? There's such peace and joy. But I want to talk to you about today the secrets I discovered during that time. And God is still performing miracles in our lives, especially when it comes to finances. Because, see, finances can ruin everything. 
If you're having problems financially, it can affect your marriage, uh, your children. It affects everything because 90%, 90% of everything you touch has to do with money. At the time when, the, when our divorce happened in 2010 and everything just began falling apart, I went to see my pastor because I have a pastor and I love him very much. As I'm with him in his home, the Lord spoke to me in the most difficult moment, I think, of my life. Because a week earlier, uh, we had lost a whole lot, not only home and things, but things were just going so bad. And the Lord spoke and said, honor this man today with $2,000 for the rest of his life. Now, I shared this with you, but you don't know what's happened since. So I, I want to tell you, because it's, it's going to lift your faith. God said, honor him. God didn't say give him. He said, honor him. You know how it says in Proverbs 3, honor the Lord with your substance. It's all about honor. Honor touches the heart of God, and, and especially when you honor man of God. So he said, honor this man with $2,000 every month for the rest of your life. Now, you see, it's not money. People think money, and if you think money, you're wrong. Because money represents who you are. Money represents your energy, your gifts, your work, and a whole lot more, your sweat. It just, you know, it represents you. It's an extension of who you are. And, and we express our faith when we give, when we give to God's work. It's, a, it's a, a declaration of faith, frankly, when we support God's work. So I said, okay, Lord, I'll do it. I, I was reluctant. It was hard to obey, but I did. And the Lord spoke to me and said, because you obeyed me, this was that same day. He said, because you obeyed me, the losses in your life will stop. And my, my goodness, we, I've had losses you can't even believe. And God said, they'll stop now. And they did amazingly. He said, because you obeyed me, restoration is coming. And I didn't think at that time marriage, I'm thinking only money. But God did restore everything. And you and I know uh, only a fool believes you can buy a miracle. No, no. When you obey God, God will do things for you. It's, it's all about obedience. It's, it's about faith. What faith it releases from your heart. And the third thing God said is, because you obeyed me, abundance will come so you will not fear the future. Seven days later, my friends, the Cliftons, walked up to me and, and God spoke to them, precious couple, to pay off my legal fees at the time and paid my debts. And this happened over a year, but God spoke to them and my losses stopped. And then they, they had me come over and pray over the land. They, they own a lot of land in, in Texas. And they said, pray over, over, over the land because they think we have oil in the land. And I prayed and on the way back to the airport, Mr. Clifton said, because uh, God spoke to us again, he said, and, and, and because of what God is doing in their life, we want to bless you with a check uh, every month for the rest of your life. So here I was stunned because I'm giving a check to my pastor. Now he's telling me he's going to give me a check, he and his wife. And by the way, his wife had a dream. Imagine God spoke to her in a dream to, to help me, and, and, and they did. And then the third thing that God said to them Besides that, is that God would use them to bless my life in the future. And I'm standing in London only days ago at the, in the service. We would like and to dear to Mr. Clifton was there and his wife. And they both said that God had spoken to them to give wait, them wait, another wait, check, stop, which was stop, a very stop. large check. God blessed my friends with an, um, an amazing amount of money. And they spoke and said that God spoke to them again to bless me. And the Lord reminded me of the promise he made to me that abundance will come my way. So now I'm seeing the harvest come in an amazing way. And Suzanne and I are seeing restoration come in an amazing way in our personal life. What the devil meant for evil, God has turned it around for good. And the Lord is, is restoring to us double, literally double what we lost is coming back. And I want to believe God with you today. Really, I'm, I'm coming to you as your friend, uh, you're my partner. I love you. You've stood with me all these years to bring the gospel to the world. And this has to do, like what I said, God did this for me personally and Suzanne and my family. And it's just lifted my faith to believe God for you now. Because how can I believe for you unless God did it for me? You know what, what it says in the Bible? I will bless you and make you a blessing. Well, God has blessed us. And now I pray that what I will do and pray and believe God with you, will bring blessings to your life. Remember what the Bible says. Give, Jesus said this. You know, this is not from the lips of some man. 
This is from the Son of God himself who said, Give, it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will man give to your bosom. Now, or we believe the Bible, or we don't. And it's in the Bible. Not only did the Lord say, Give, it shall be given. Paul spent two, he wrote two chapters on giving in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, collecting an offering for the saints in Jerusalem. And we, we all know what, what, what it says in 2 Corinthians 9, 6, he that sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and he that sows bountifully will reap bountifully, and God will multiply the seed you sow and give you back a, an amazing harvest. It's all in the Bible. Giving is God's idea. The harvest is God's idea. I was with Suzanne recently at somebody's house, and I noticed grass growing through the cement. And I said to Sue, look at this grass growing. Oh, she said, yeah, they need to clean it. I said, no, honey. I said, look again. Well, she didn't know what I was doing. I said, look at this grass growing through the cement. So she looked and she said, well, so? I said, that shows you how powerful the seed is. The seed under that cement is more powerful than the cement, that the grass can break through the cement. And the Lord really spoke to me through this and said, no satanic cement will ever stop the harvest from coming. When you sow seed, the devil may throw cement over it, but it will not stop the harvest. God Almighty has placed amazing power in seed. Now listen, when you spend your money in the store, you exchange it for something you're buying. When you give it to God, it turns into seed and, for, and will produce a harvest. Therefore, your seed never leaves your life. It goes into your future. And so giving to the Lord is in the Bible. The Bible is full of examples of sowing and reaping. You think about, you know, uh, uh, in Genesis 26, where Isaac sowed in famine, think about famine, and reaped a hundredfold. David gave and received. Solomon gave and received. Jacob made a, made a vow to God and, and said, if you bring me back home, when he was on his way to Laban's house, he said, I'll give you back 10% of everything I touch. And so the Word of God is full of examples of giving to God and receiving a great harvest. God wants to bless you. And today, I want to believe God with you for three things, that your losses will stop. I'm telling you, it's happened to me. It will happen to you. I'm going to believe God with you for total restoration to come your way, financially and with everything else too. It's going to happen, I promise you. And number three, abundance. Now, why do we have to give? And why are amounts important? Because giving releases the harvest. Okay, now we know that part. But secondly, the amount matters because it, it's not the amount of money. It's what faith it releases out of you. In Ecclesiastes 11.2, it says, So a portion of seven also of eight, because you don't know what evil will come on the earth, meaning that your, your seed actually protects you from harm. Now, yes, you'll have losses, you'll have trouble, we all have troubles, but God restores all that to us. And, and, and a wall of protection is built around us as we increase our faith when it comes to sowing and reaping. So God is looking for your seed so God can bless you. You have to give God something to use. God cannot bless you or me unless he has something he can use to bless us with. And so that's why it says nothing is impossible with God. It never, say, it never says nothing is impossible to God. It says nothing is impossible with. With means God is looking for a vehicle. He's looking for a channel. He's looking for something we can give him. A spiritual miracle demands a spiritual act. So people have to come down the aisle, pray a prayer, receive Jesus in their hearts. That's a, an, an act that is spiritual. When people are healed physically, they have to act physically. Jesus said, pick up your bed and walk and such things. Uh, so when we, when we experience financial healing, it comes by acting financially, giving to the Lord of our substance. Uh, uh, Proverbs 3, 9, 10, honor the Lord with your substance and the first fruits of all your increase so will your barns be filled with plenty and your presses will burst out with new wine. So I really want to believe God with you today for three things, that the losses in your life will stop. Haven't you had enough losses? 
Maybe you've lost your home. Maybe you've lost other things in your life. Maybe uh, think about losing peace of mind and the, and the worry and the, all the stuff that goes with it. God wants to stop the losses. It's happened to me. It'll happen to you. And I'm praying that God will restore everything you've lost. Job lost everything. Losses come to all of us. But God restored everything double. double. And there are five keys for restoration found in 1 Samuel 30 when David came to Ziglag and he had lost everything. What did he do? It says this. He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. That's, that's praise. That's saying, Lord, I praise you in spite of what's going on in my life. And we know what praise does. Praise unleashes the part of God. Praise brings us into, into God's house, into where He is. His address becomes our address because praise is where God dwells. And so when we praise Him, we come right to where He is. And praise, the Bible says very clearly, listen, praise is a weapon of war. Psalm 149, that the high praises of God be in their mouth and into edges within their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen. Praise brings us into God's court. There's power, great, great power in praise. There's deliverance in praise. Psalm 50 says, when we praise God, we're set free. Whoso offereth praise will glorify me, and to him who orders this conversation right will I show the salvation or deliverance of God. Praise brings preservation. We are preserved and protected when we praise. So praise is the first key to restoration. If you want God to restore you, please hear me. Praise him first. Secondly, David, it says very clearly, agreed with Abiathar. So the prayer of agreement brings restoration. And the third thing is he pursued the enemy. This is all found in 1 Samuel 30. He pursued the enemy. That's faith. That's taking action. And so when we give, we take action, frankly. And the fourth, he attacked the enemy. He took his authority. And we have to do that as Christians. And finally, he gave. Giving is, in the, is, is, is a part of restoration because it says he gave to the elders of Israel. So giving is important because when we praise the Lord, when we come into prayer and agreement, when we act in faith and when we take our authority and when we give, it brings restoration. And I've gone through all this in my, in my, in my own life. Now, restoration will come. I promise you, you will be restored. Look at me, listen. God will restore everything lost, double. Because he did it for Job, he'll do it for you. Thirdly, abundance. Jesus made it very clear that abundant life is ours. But not only life. It says God has given us all things, all things to enjoy. Okay, we're his children. See how you give to your children? Same with God. He gives abundantly. Everything God gives, he gives it in abundance because you're his child. God wants you to be famine-proof, okay? God wants, wants you to be famine-proof so you will not fear the future and, 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 and think, oh, my God, what's going to happen to me and my children and, grand, and, and you know, grandkids? No, no. Secure your tomorrow financially today as you obey the Lord. Now, we're, we're going to pray in just a moment. So, but, but you have to act. Remember, the three major keys when it comes to giving that release the harvest. Proverbs 8.21 says, If you love the Lord, He will give you treasure, that I may cause them who love me to inherit substance. That's Proverbs 8.21. The second key is the Word of God. That's Job 22.21 through 24. It says, Receive the law from His mouth, and prosperity comes. And thirdly is obedience. And that's Job 36.11. Obey Him, and you'll spend, you'll spend your days in prosperity, years in pleasure. So God has done something for me. And, and it, it's, it, it continues. The harvest has not stopped. In fact, when your faith rises to a higher level and you start giving to God, it, it releases dormant seed from the past. So let's pray right now. Let's believe God that the Lord is going to give you three things. Your losses will stop. You've had enough of that. Restoration will come because it's promised in the Scriptures. 1 Samuel 30, and so on. David recovered all, and you will recover all in Jesus' name. In fact, double. And abundance will come your way. God has given us all things to enjoy. It's not His will that you lack. It says, none among them lacked. 
That's Acts 4. No lack means abundance. Let's believe right now. Come on. I've come with you today. I've come to you today because I want to talk to you heart to heart because I believe God is going to do exactly what we ask him to do today. Let's agree because remember, agreement is powerful. Now, I want you right now, just lift, lift your hands and praise the Lord. Just, just say, Lord, I praise you. All is well. I praise you. My miracle is on the way. I praise you for your goodness. I praise you for your power. I praise you for your grace. I praise you for who you are, dear Jesus. I praise your name. Just praise him and thank him. Now let's agree because that's the second thing David did. Father, we come into agreement in Jesus' name. Come on, agree with me. Agree. You've got to agree with me. We agree in Jesus' name that the losses in our life will stop. Lord, I pray every loss in that one's life will stop like you've done it with me and Suzanne. Do it for the people. Do it for my partner. The losses will stop in Jesus' name now. Lord, I pray restoration will come double in Jesus' name beginning today. And Lord, I pray also abundance will come now, beginning now, in Jesus' sweetest name. So Lord, right now we agree no more losses. We agree restoration. We agree abundance in Jesus' name will come our way. For your sake and glory and honor. Amen and amen. I'm going to have you so seed in just a moment, but you have to believe God that the miracle will begin in seven days from now. You see, and, and, and here's why. Because it, that's what happened to me. I sowed seed in the life of my pastor that I'm still sowing, personally sowing, and I'm still getting the harvest, even now. And it's been three years. But it began seven days later when the, my friends, the, the Cliftons, walked up and said, God spoke to us. Let's believe right now that seven days from today, as you pick up that phone today, or you, you sow your seed online, or you send it in the mail, that seven days from today, your miracle begins. Now, that's why I've come to you today. I really believe this with you. I believe with all of my heart. God Almighty wants you out of the problem you're in, your losses will stop. It's in the Bible. It's in the, it, it shall come to pass. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Now, send in your prayer requests also. Don't forget, we, I've been telling you, we have a prayer center now here in our studio in California. People are praying for your needs 24 hours a day. We opened it just about, no goodness, three weeks ago. Uh, the presence and power of God is so strong around that, that room. Every time I walk by, you can feel it. And there are people praying for your needs 24 hours a day. So send your prayer requests and trust God. He will meet your needs. But now, get to the phones. Go to, go to the phones quickly or, or online. But if you're calling, just tell the people who, who answer that you're believing God that seven days from today, your miracle will happen. And have them write it down for you. Just say, please write it down that seven days from today, my miracle financially will happen. If you're doing it online, same thing, just print it in, and please release by faith, seven days from today, my miracle begins. In fact, praise the Lord and do it, even as you're calling or putting it online or, or in the mail. Just, just thank the Lord and praise Him that seven days from today, the seed you sow today will produce three things, and the miracle begins in seven days. It will produce no losses. They're going to stop. The losses will stop. There's a certain seed that triggers the harvest, and it's the seed that has a lot of faith connected to it. And let this seed be the seed, okay? That's Ecclesiastes 11.6. It says, sow your seed in the morning and sow your seed in the evening because you don't know what seed will produce, which one will trigger the harvest, in other words. So let's believe God. Father, let the seed trigger the harvest. Let the seed produce. And Lord, let the seed sown in faith uh, raise, uh, resurrect dormant seed. Bring the harvest uh, of, of dormant seed back in Jesus' precious name. And the people said, Amen, Amen. So get to the phone and call right now. And, and, and believe God. No more losses. Restoration and abundance. And make sure to declare it. It begins in seven days from today. The God we serve has promised us in His Word. If two agree 
it shall be done. We agreed. If we sow, we reap. Now believe God and trust the Lord that the fear of tomorrow will vanish. It will be canceled. You are famine proof. No matter what's going on in the world, God will take care of you. And Father, I lay my hands upon these needs, and I believe every need to be met financially, every need to be met in family, every need to be met in physical healing. Precious Jesus, meet every need. Heal your people, I pray. Heal their homes and families, and heal finances for your glory and honor. Amen and amen. As you keep calling, make sure to send your prayer requests right away because we want to pray over your needs here. And they're prayed over 24 hours a day. And I go to Israel the next few days, and I want to take your prayer requests with me because I'll tell you, whenever we're in Israel, whenever we pray in Israel, the miracles happen fast, pronto, as they say in Italian. They happen real quick. So send in your prayer requests. We'll pray for them here. Take them to Israel, and God's going to meet every need. So do it today, and keep calling. Don't stop calling, and sow your seed for the gospel. This is not for me. It's for the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ, it's used purely for the gospel to be preached around the world through television, meetings, crusades, conferences we're doing around the world. Yeah, I'm on my way to Buenos Aires soon in India and China. It's going to be fantastic. And what you sow is going to win the loss. But watch what God will do for you. No more losses. Remember, restoration and abundance is coming your way. In Jesus' name, amen. We believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer to humanity and the troubles on this earth. The gospel, the gospel, and only the gospel is the solution. Pastor Benny Hinn is passionate about reaching the lost by obeying the mandate for all believers to go into all the world and preach the gospel. I'm talking about souls. Save my soul. Men and women around the world who have not heard the gospel. It's our duty, our privilege, our responsibility to tell them who else will. Nobody will. You can help touch millions around the world as you catch Pastor Benny's vision to use every available resource and opportunity to reach the lost. How can we preach the gospel without support? The gospel is free, but the means to deliver the gospel is expensive. Please go to your phone now and give your gift of $1,500 or $100 for souls. The minute you make a decision to support the gospel, the minute you say, Lord, I will spend the rest of my life seeing men and women come to the cross. When you make that decision, God Almighty will bless everything you do in life. Call now or give online. Thank you for catching Pastor Benny's vision and sharing his passion to see the lost saved. Jesus came to give his life for men and women, and for me, and for you, to have the privilege to tell the world, awesome. <laughs>